Did not let the officers come in close and will be reopening on Monday. Please call back at that time. Thank you. If this is an urgent matter, please contact the trooper in your building. In the last decade or so, we saw really, you know, as we saw across everywhere, heavy financialization of housing markets. Not again, like not that they weren't ever before used as financial tools, um, right? They're investments at the same time. They're homes for people, right? So that that's kind of that that juggling act, um, or that that pulling in two different directions, right? This is somebody's home, and it's somebody else's investment. And so they're looked at in very different ways by who the different players are. And, but what we saw, especially with securitization, I would say that was one of the big parts of big players in what happened. You know, like more and more distance between the financial side of it and the fact that it was somebody's home, right? So it's being, you know, some, some bank is making the loan. They're not even keeping the loan on their books, right? And then they're... And it's not even going to a secondary market. It's not going to Fannie or Freddie, right? It's going into this other world of financial tools and investment strategies. And it's ending up being picked up by investors who are really have no connection at all to the buildings. We are concerned, though, that you know they're not addressing underlying conditions in the buildings, that a lot of the repairs are cosmetic. And we're concerned about what's happening with the rents in those buildings. So even though in theory they should probably be out checking all their buildings, we know that most banks don't, especially the ones that have the largest portfolios because they're so large. Um, well, they may be going out, but it's it's <laughs> be surprised if they were out really doing it all on their own. Oh, yeah, that's right. Let's see, I've lived in this building 18 years. I've had an infestation of rats. I've had an infestation of mice. I have cockroaches coming out of every end during the daytime. The mice only come out at night. So, you know, as they always say, when the mice are here, you're safe. But when they're not, that means the rats are able to access. So, But they claim they fix the problem. So, but yet I still have mice. You know, it's just that they need to improve and do things better, you know, to... Yeah, the super doesn't live on premise anymore. We actually do need a super on premise. But yeah. If you can never get into the office, it's hard to reach the office. Yeah. Like, if you try to call the office, they always give you, you know... It's just the answering machine. Sometimes it's, you know, a person and stuff. But otherwise than that, the people just call 311 when they have lots of complaints and stuff. Yeah, probably. Mucho problema, mucho lío. Eh, yo le hablo a ellos y yo no contestan para atrás y uno le dice las cosas, yo no le hacen caso a uno. Entonces, ¿qué sucede? En estos días, esto se cayó, todo esto se cayó aquí. Hubo un derrumbe. En el mes 8, eh, el día 9, y, y, es, y, esto duró, y duraron eh, un mes y medio, dos meses y medio, arreglando, arreglando aquí. Entonces pusieron gente inexperta que no sabían trabajar y estaban quemando los marcos con antorcha y luego sucede, yo le dije que pararan el trabajo porque no estaba adecuado lo que estaban haciendo porque eso es, provoca tóxico, entonces luego se paró el trabajo como dos veces por la razón de que estaban trabajando no adecuadamente bien y después mandaron a una gente especial a arreglar aquí y luego ellos usaron la luz, la luz mía, me llegó de 400 y pico de dólares, entonces ellos tenían que hacerme una, y así mismo, la nevera, que también tiene per, de perfecto, que no, no enfría abajo y la comida se me daña, se me daña, entonces yo no meto nada, porque todo lo que entro se daña, mire, eh, alguna cosa, porque no, no enfría abajo. Um, I've been living here since 2010, I'm Bronx, New York, um, I like the neighborhood, with the buildings, okay, I love the neighbors, with the buildings, and eh, okay, we have mics and rats, okay, I had to get a cat from the street to take care, to take care of my rats and mice. Okay, mice from here, and rats from this way. My cat is this big, and she catches them and I kill them. You know what, get your shit straight. Hot water, heat, get it straight. Hot water, heat. 
get it together. We're people, okay? We're people. We're just like you. Yeah, so this sucks. You, you know, Does ribbing still occur along along lines of say class or uh, credit score, in, as opposed to race? Yeah, I mean it's a different form of. Um, I mean the way it shows up is different than before. It's not that they totally blanket whole neighborhoods, but you will see. I mean what we saw during the housing bubble, right, were neighborhoods that were communities of color, which were much more likely to have subprime loans come in, right? I mean that's that hasn't shifted. Um, and I think it's still more prevalent to see in, I mean, there is this, there is a correlation between subprime lending and race, and then hence there's going to be a correlation between credit scores and race, because if you're getting more, uh, not just mortgage products, but any kind of financial product that is by definition subprime or, you know, that are, is riskier, that has worse terms, you're going to have folks dealing with credit issues. <laughs> Thank you. If it's a urgent matter, please contact the super in your building.